five countries are part of the world. <coughs> the physical body comes from the world, it goes back to the world. The physical body acts as the base for the other khandhas, feeling, memory, thought, consciousness. Those, those four depend on the body. Without the body they won't work. And when a person dies, those disappear. They die with the body. But the chitta, chitta doesn't. Chitta is the, the, uh, it's the boss, if you like. It's the, the thing that matters the whole time. The chitta is really the essence of Buddhism. And the chitta is the one that, is the commander, the one that, that, that pushes the khandhas about, makes them do things. But it only does that when there's avicca there, there's, there's, there's a form of ignorance. And then it, then it pushes the khandhas about to do bad things sometimes, and if dhamma comes up, good things. If the person becomes arahant, then the bad side of it disappears. And it's the Dhamma that comes up. And the Dhamma then uses the khandhas to do something good, something uh, helpful to teach, to uh, uh, help people in other ways. As, you, as we find the Archans doing it. The, the Archans like like Tanishan Mahabhu, he does this sort of thing. He helps people. And this, this is the, the Dhamma coming out in the Khandas, which are still there. But when, when, when the Arahant dies, the Khandas disappear. It's the same, same way they do with the ordinary person. Uh, but the, the Chitta then, then uh, disappears from the world. And because it becomes Nibbana. Well, it's gone back home then. But the nature of the, the chitta, if you want to know what it is, the only thing you can say is emptiness. It's not, not, nothing, nothing in the world is like it. There's no, no comparable thing. And there's no analogy you can really give for it. The thing is, the, the chitta is the, the one that, uh, let's say, knows Nibbana. It, it is Nibbana. But it's been uh, usurped by avicca, the ignorance. Not, not knowing. Because it was not knowing, it's been pushed into doing things in the world, in that direction. And when it does things in the world, uh, it gets caught up in the world. It gets trapped. And it, it can't see anything else but the world. And it builds up the five senses in, in people and animals. And when the five senses are there, the five senses see nothing but the world at all. And they're caught up in the world. And when that happens, then there's, there's absolutely no hope of getting to Nibbana. Until one can learn to overcome the wanting that arises in, in uh, these, these states. If one overcomes the wanting, then the attachments overcome. The attachments drop away. If the attachments drop away, then there's nothing to stop the world, the chitta going in the direction of Nibbana. But it requires that one stops all attachments, not just some. Yeah. The grasping for the world often 
yes, that's true. It is difficult. <laughs> but the thing is, one's got to learn to look at things right. And if you look at them right, you'll see what this world is. And if you see what this world is, uh, you'll have something inside you will turn against it. And when you've got that happening, then if you foster that, it'll tend to overcome the craving to go back to the world. Because when going back to the world means that one, one gives way to the kilesas. And one wants to go back and have a good time, uh, go into a pub and have a beer, uh, do all these other things in the world. And people like that sort of thing. They like doing it. But really speaking, if they, if they look carefully, they'll find that the result that comes from these things is just dukkha. Just discontent. They get discontented and then uh, they get afraid because they're either not well or they're going or they're getting old and they're likely to die and the, the discontent piles on them as they get older. And then they don't know where they are, they're in a mess. And dukkha, the dukkha becomes much stronger. Quite likely to go like that. Um, one can go against it by thinking. Uh, if you find the practice very difficult, try thinking about what it means if you don't do the practice. Try thinking about what way one's going to go. Uh, try thinking how, what it will, what will it be when I die if I don't, don't get through in this practice. Uh, where are you going to be reborn? I don't know, I mean, this time I think most people here have had quite a reasonable and good rebirth. But we can't, can't be sure that it will always be like that, because we don't know our karma. We don't know what our karma is in the past. Uh, a lot of, lot of it is probably good. But there may be some bad patches there that we don't know about. And what happens if that comes up? We've got to think like that. And I think that I, I've got to overcome this, you know, these, these kilesas, this dukkha. The thing is, if one can get some success in samadhi, one will realize that that is sukha. When you realize that sukha, then you want to do it more. I mean, uh, uh, it's true, I think, with most people that if they have a particular time in the day when they always do the meditation practice, they find that that time the mind takes on the attitude of meditation and it comes much more easily. Because your habit is to, be, to have the mind in a state of meditation at that time. So in order to, to help one's practice, one can make times uh, when they're suitable, when you always do the practice. You may do other times also, but you always do it at those special times. And this can help a lot, because it becomes a habit, and the habit can help you. You can't see the jitter. 
uh, because the jitta that does the seeing. One can can realize it at any point, really, if one only knows how to look at it. <laughs> looking, uh, looking at it is only a way of speaking here. Yeah. One, if one realizes it, you can know at any time. Oh no, not necessarily. Uh, if if one enters the stream, Sotapanna, you may know what the jitta is after that. We may not. <laughs> I don't know. The thing is, uh, there may be many ways, I'm not sure. What? The only way is to get there and see it for yourself. <laughs> then you'll know. How will you know? By the experience. By what changes. I mean, we, we know things because we see the change, changes that take place. Um, where one has the chelases, uh, these are sort of thick chelases, probably those chelases will be thinned down or disappear. And that's, that'll be obvious become quite obvious to the person. Could you give an example? Well, the person has uh, a lot of doubt. And they, they, if they get to the stage of Sotapana, and they, they go, go through it, that doubt disappears completely. Because they've, they've, they've seen the, the result. When I say seeing, you don't see anything actually. But you see anything because it isn't something you can see. But but you you know it. I mean, the, the seeing in this case is, uh, we use it because this is a sort of idiom as we have. But it's more experiencing. Consciousness is when the chitta associates with an object. In other words, you get the, the three things coming up. The object, the sense organ, and consciousness. And the chitta is the, really the two, two coming together, the consciousness and the object. And, oh no, I got it the wrong way. The consciousness is the chitta coming together with the object. It's around, right way around. Because <laughs> when...